Do you need an industrial sewing machine? Probably not. But do you want one? I just bought this Singer Industrial Sewing Machine and I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about why I finally took the plunge on an industrial and some of the differences between an industrial machine and a home-based machine and some of the differences between industrial machines themselves. To give you some background in case you haven't watched some of my other videos, I've been sewing for three or four years, mostly as a hobby. I do a little bit of side work and I've been using home-based machines up until purchasing this machine about a week ago. And in my previous two Do You Need an Industrial Machine videos, uh, one of the things I talk about is that a lot of people feel like you have to have an industrial machine to sew on heavier materials or to sew leather. That's not necessarily the case. And also that a lot of machines that are marketed, especially on the used market, as industrial or heavy duty machines are really just standard sewing machines being passed off as something that they're not. So if your sewing is a hobby and you want to use some you know, ballistic nylon or maybe some lightweight upholstery leather to do one or two projects every now and then, don't feel like you have to run out and buy an industrial machine. If you're going to be running a business or sewing some really heavy materials, in that case an industrial machine might be your best choice, but just because the machine is industrial doesn't mean it's the machine that you need. So case in point, this is a Singer 20U or 20-33. So I think this one was from uh, maybe the early 1980s. And it's an industrial machine. It's you know got a big industrial table. There's a third horsepower electric motor underneath it that's uh, operated by a clutch. So uh, the motor on, it's now spinning at full RPM. Uh, and there's a clutch mechanism to release it. So it's legitimately an industrial machine. Will this machine sew saddle leather or you know vegetable tan leather to make gun holsters or belts or something with? Eh, maybe a little, but that's not what this machine is for at all. So, you know, again, if you have a particular interest that requires a particularly heavy duty machine, make sure you educate yourself and buy the right machine for your purposes. This particular machine is really similar to a Singer or any other home-based machine. It's probably the most uh, home machine-like of the industrials, and maybe you could be considered as a good first step into an industrial machine. I'll uh, show you the machine, and I'm gonna do a speed comparison between some of my other machines, because honestly, speed is probably the biggest advantage of this machine. So if you're familiar with home-based sewing machines, this machine won't look very different. Probably the main difference is that there's no motor mounted on the outside of the machine. The motor's mounted under the table and connected to the machine by a belt of the sort that you would probably see on the front of your car engine. Like all of my other machines, this machine is a single needle lock stitch machine. Uh, this machine happens to be zigzag capable which uh, most of my other machines are, and has needle position from center left and right. It does have a reverse lever, so you can use reverse. Uh, one of the interesting things about this particular machine, as far as its zigzag capabilities, is it has these locking knobs, so you can set a stitch width maximum, lock it in with one knob, so that's as wide as it'll go, or and you can also set a minimum with the other knob. So you can restrict the range of zigzag to a certain range. The machine has a pretty typical stitch length adjustment knob. Has a nice detents to it, which I like. This machine, which I bought used, as I almost always buy everything, uh, it's missing the front of the tension knob but the tensioner works, so that's fine. It also has another knob on this machine that you can lock out the zigzag, so if you're doing straight stitch only, you can change out the needle plate uh, and lock that out to secure everything to get uh, a more consistent straight stitch. I'm not sure that I'll ever need to use that, but it's there. Otherwise, the machine is pretty similar to any home machine. It uses a class 15 bobbin that 
and bobbin case loading from the front, uh, very similar to pretty much all my other machines. The feed dogs on this machine are really, really beefy and make for excellent feeding of the material. You can compare them to the feed dogs on my Singer 237. And you can see there's quite a bit more going on there. Taking a look underneath the machine, you can see that it's all geared, there's no belts to break, and it's pretty simple and beefy. This machine is on the lighter end of the industrial machine scale, but it's definitely beefier than my home machines. One thing to note is this particular machine, the Singer 20U, has these two levers underneath, and uh, I don't have a knee control on this table yet. I have it, I just haven't installed it. With this machine, one of these two levers operates the presser foot lift, and the other operates the zigzag, so you can use the knee control either to lift the presser foot or you can change it to operate a temporary zigzag so you can go back and forth between zigzag and straight using your knee. Before I show you how the machine sews, let's do a little comparison between some of my other machines and this one. This is going to be an unscientific speed comparison, but it should at least visually show you the difference. So I'll start with my trusty FOF 260. This is the machine that I have had the longest of the ones that I currently use. This machine is on the heavier duty end of the home machine spectrum. I've sewn upholstery vinyl and uh, lightweight leathers and Cordura you know, ballistic nylons, everything I've ever sewn. I've, I've done uh, at least some with this machine and it's worked great. So, but just for this comparison, this is 500 denier Cordura, two layers, and I'm just going to sew at full speed just to show what that looks like with this machine. I'll use the longest stitch length, which is about a four millimeter stitch on this machine. Now I'll do the same thing with my Thompson Mini Walker. And now full speed at the longest stitch length on the Singer 20U Industrial. One thing I've read quite a bit when researching industrial machines is uh, some talk about the advantages of servo motors over old style clutch motors like I have on this machine. And one of the things people seem to suggest is that clutch motors aren't as easy to control. Now I, this is the only clutch motor sewing machine I've ever used, so I don't know if it's typical of the breed, but I'll show you the slow speed control. Considering uh, this is my probably fourth time actually trying to sew on this thing, I feel very comfortable that I can control it uh, when sewing slowly. Another nice thing about this machine is that when I want to stop, it stops immediately. Zigzag on this machine works really well also. I found this machine used uh, locally for about $300, a little under, and for an industrial machine with the table, with reverse and zigzag, uh, I think that's a pretty decent deal. And uh, a lot of industrial machines, even, even older ones without reverse, albeit probably um, even burlier machines than this one, uh, are gonna cost twice that for an old used machine. I'll probably still end up buying one of those. This is undoubtedly not my last sewing machine. But I think it fits nicely into my progression from the most basic low-end home sewing machine uh, up to my, my FAF, uh, which is a really capable machine. The uh, Mini Walker, the Thompson Mini Walker, which is a little faster and with a walking foot may still be uh, 
handier for heavier materials than even this machine, but the speed and accuracy with being able to stop on a dime like this machine is able to do, I think will, will serve me well for the kinds of jobs that I do. Uh, and the table, I like quite a bit. From looking in the manual, I learned that this particular machine can actually have a motor mounted to it, just like a home machine could. And I have seen instances looking online for used machines where typically home-based machines have had or been mounted to industrial tables and industrial motors. Depending on the machine, that might work fine, although if it's not the right machine, that might also lead to some destruction of your sewing machine. So uh, if you choose to go that route, proceed with caution. Anyway, that's my thoughts on this machine. I'll keep you posted as I get to use it more, and if you want to learn more about this machine and see more stuff, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.